here. I'm Leah Jamison. I am chair of the steering committee for the NSF-funded National Academy of Engineering's project on the engagement of engineering societies and undergraduate engineering education. And so it is, it is really just a pleasure to welcome um, this group that includes um, people, both volunteers and staff, who've been deeply immersed in um, engineering societies, um, some, some, some deans, some faculty, um, some representatives from industry, certainly representatives from the, the National Academy, from NSF. And so we're going to have um, some pretty great discussions over the next day and a half. Um, we're going to start with a couple of welcomes. Before doing that, I do want to do my own thank you and welcome. Um, is that we have had we have a, a superb steering committee for this project, and I'd like to ask the members of the steering committee to stand so I can thank you, and in advance, everybody here can thank you for helping put this together. A few, few. I know who you are. <laughs> thank you all. I will just say a couple words about how I think I ended up here. Um, I know many of you, and I hope to get to know a lot more of you over the next couple of days. Um, I'm the Dean of Engineering at Purdue, and I was trying to think back for how long I can say I have been a volunteer with the IEEE. Um, I, I think I can pin it down to late 70s, um, so a long time. Um, and, and in fact, there have been conversations with various heads and deans and, and even presidents throughout my career at Purdue about, you know, how do you balance this volunteer life and this academic life? Um, it's been a core value for me. Um, and so um, when I was approached with um, by representatives in the NAE to say we're, we, we, we have sponsorship from NSF for this project. Would you be interested in um, being involved? It was, it was actually one of the most obvious decisions um, that I could have made because um, I think there really are strong connections. But they also both are important paths. And so it's, it's easy to converge, but it's maybe even easier to diverge. And so the opportunity to say, with some intentionality, can we think about what that intersection point is? How can engineering societies be effectively engaged, both from their point of view and from the um, perspective of those whose, whose lives are in, in engineering education? And so we have a lot to talk about. I'm going to start by introducing Proctor Reed, who um, to, to welcome on, you all on behalf of the National Academy. Um, Proctor is the Director of Programs um, at NAE. He's been with the NAE since 1990. And um, programs bring pretty much everything, running from finances to, to people to projects. Um, and so I, I, I've known Proctor for a long time. I'm not sure there's anyone who has quite as much knowledge as the National Academy of Engineering, so it's my pleasure to introduce him. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, and I, I'm not Hal Romig. I, he do bring his uh, re regards, his regrets. Uh, he is uh, called to open a, another meeting of our uh, Academy Search and Peer Committee uh, at the very same time across town. But he uh, sends his, his regards to everyone here. He will try to be here for as much of this as he can. Uh, but I do want to welcome all of you on behalf of our president, Dan Mote, uh, uh, to this uh, uh, this building to the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, our new sort of uh, combined uh, uh, identity, and this National Academy Engineer of Engineering workshop on uh, engaging uh, the engagement of engineering societies in undergraduate engineering education. Um, I I do want to thank uh, I want to thank Leah for chairing this steering committee for the rest of the steering committee members for their hard work in the uh, in the sort of first phase of this or guiding a lot of the fact finding that has uh, has served us as the basis uh, as sort of one of the the uh, foundations for today's workshop and uh, for organizing helping to plan and organize this uh, this workshop um, I want to thank the National Science Foundation and uh, particularly uh, Elliot Douglas who's uh, program director in the in the engineering education and centers of 
division, who's been a, a, a sort of strong, uh, strongly engaged and supportive of this effort. Uh, and I do want to thank uh, Ken Jarbo, the project director, and and uh, the rest of my NAE colleagues, uh, Carl Anderson, uh, Sherry Hunter, and Jason Williams for their pulling all the pieces together to help this uh, this event actually come off. Uh, I'd like to just say a few words about who we are. Uh, I know many of you have been here before and uh, know a lot about the academies, but some of you may not. Um, uh, the origins of this project and the, uh, the sort of specific goals and objectives of this workshop, you're going to hear a lot more about that from, from uh, Leah in a bit, but I'll just uh, outline a few things. Uh, first, uh, the Academy of Engineering uh, was founded in 1964 uh, as a sort of private, um, independent, nonprofit uh, institution that provides engineering leadership for the nation. Our mission is to advance the well-being of the nation by promoting a vibrant engineering profession and by marshalling the expertise of the nation's eminent engineers uh, to provide independent advice to the federal government uh, on matters that involve engineering and technology. So the academies, we have about 2,000 plus uh, peer elected members uh, and foreign members um, who are uh, really sort of leaders from industry, academia, uh, the, the other sectors, uh, government, uh, non other nonprofits. Um, I think our distinctive and the nature of engineering, our distinctive among the academies is that uh, roughly 40, 40 to 50 percent of our members are from industry or have had uh, significant industry experience. Um, the, these, these individuals really serve as the uh, the the advisors they they control oversee the sort of quality of the work of the academy of engineering and the work of the national academies uh, more widely they are very involved in in our uh, program activities and uh, certainly in the the oversight of as i say of the defining what we do uh, and how we do it um, we're part of this larger entity i mentioned at the outset the academies of sciences engineering and medicine uh, these are uh, two other uh, peer elected bodies uh, and we uh, we are, are part or sort of share this uh, part of the same congressional uh, active incorporation back from the Lincoln uh, administration um, where the academies was the at that time the National Academy of Sciences which was directed to um, to uh, whenever called upon as I say the language out of it whenever called upon by any department or agency of the government to investigate, examine, experiment, and re report upon any subject of science or art, uh, and to do that without uh, compensation, we have in, we've reinterpreted that a bit. Uh, obviously, we we rely on on sponsors like the Science National Science Foundation and others to help support our work. Um, but that is the, the basic charge of this institution really is to uh, is to serve the nation and to uh, marshal the expertise of our uh, scientific engineering and health communities to do that. Uh, so every year we involve roughly 6,000 uh, volunteers. We call them volunteers. We seek them out and ask specific individuals to serve on the various uh, committees, projects that we undertake here at the institution. Uh, and these include our members. Uh, but also 6,000, that's more than our, our membership can, they can show up for, for these sorts of things in one year. So we involve a lot of, uh, of, uh, of emerging leaders in these various fields from the various sectors of, of, uh, of society uh, and in our activities. Uh, we produce probably a, you know, a couple hundred uh, consensus reports every year, the like a lot of other activity going on uh, every day here. Uh, the Academy of Engineering Studies uh, and, and other activities um, are undertaken either independently, uh, say, as through out of the uh, National Academy of Engineering's program office or jointly with various parts of the National Research Council or the, the other parts of the National Academies. Um, and we do a, a lot of, uh, of 
I've worked you know, with them, uh, with other parts of the institution related to engineering in whether it's workforce, education, um, or, or the application of engineering to various societal challenges. There are two major thrusts to the NAE's program activities, and those are um, first ensuring engineering talent, and the second is really public engagement or understanding of engineering. Uh, this activity really is part of a broader portfolio of work that we're doing related to in, uh, ensuring engineering talent, uh, and that includes a whole uh, series of, of convening activities, resource websites, consensus studies, and the like that are uh, addressing issues of the education, formation, development of, of engineers from K-12 through, uh, you know, continuing through through uh, higher education and into uh, lifelong learning. Um the origin of today's project uh, stemmed from uh, conversations with uh, then uh, EEC uh, Director Teresa Maldonado uh, back in 2014, um, who approached us about uh, conducting a, a, a project, a study, a, a survey effort that would help us understand better uh, the, the the sort of scope and uh, character nature of, of activities that uh, the, the nation's engineering societies were engaged in in support of undergraduate engineering education. Uh, this is really ABET and beyond, uh, thinking more broadly beyond just, just the, their, their engagement, certainly in the accreditation activities. Um, and that was one. So let's see if we can get a better handle on what they're doing. We know they're doing a lot of things, but we really haven't. There hasn't been a whole lot written about it, assessment done on it, and uh, and then w once you do that, uh, could you share that uh, what you learn with the, the community and seek to engage them in uh, sharing their experiences and how they might uh, work uh, together uh, and with their partners in industry and academia uh, to to uh, to play a an even more uh, significant role in undergraduate engineering education. So, um, the the uh, that that is really the focus of this broader project. Uh, the first phase of the project involved uh, a survey and uh, other fact-finding efforts, really uh, some inter interviews with, with a number of you, I'm sure, which has helped us with, uh, with the surveys and, and, and some of the interviews. Um, and that has provided the basis for a presentation you will hear today. Um, and then this phase of the project really is focused on um, on, on three things, really sharing the information uh, about the sort of current and, and potential efforts uh, that the societies are engaged in, uh, to explore ideas on how societies uh, can have a, a more effective role in undergraduate engineering education, uh, and to consider opportunities for you know learning from each other, but for perhaps even for coordinated or cooperative action on the part of the societies with with uh, with other partners uh, in this charge. So today uh, we're going to spend you know we've got really quite a full day of discussions and presentations, uh, very short presentations. Uh, you'll appreciate uh, that are planned on what engineering societies are doing and sort of uh, uh, what. Uh, they, what societies can learn from each other. The focus really today is on getting the ideas out, uh, on exploring the space, really making connections. So it really is on participation. It's really, really important for all of you to speak up. Uh, we've structured the, the day's uh, proceedings in a way so there's ample opportunity for you to share your thoughts, to, to ask questions, to respond to uh, with your own ideas. And we want to capture those. That's really the focus of today and tomorrow. Uh, this is a newer concept for me, the unconference, but really you have the opportunity to shape what we're focusing on tomorrow. But I think that's an opportunity to dive deeper into uh, to good ideas uh, that have come forward over the course of today's discussions and uh, to spend more time uh, exploring opportunities for collaboration and cooperation. So uh, that is the, you know, we that's, that's sort of the layout for the workshop proper. Um, the output of the workshop will be uh, more than a proceedings. There will be a proceedings volume. I see 
Steve Olson is here. So if you want to bend his ear, he's going to be helping us with uh, preparing a proposed uh, a, um, a summary of the of the proceedings. Uh, but the workshop uh, will be followed uh, by a series of uh, of other activities, other workshops, regional workshops that will try to take what we have learned over the course of the uh, of the project to date and this workshop uh, today and tomorrow uh, to uh, communities around the country to, to continue this dialogue and look for opportunities for cooperation. So with that, I turn the podium back over to you, Leah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Proctor. He was he was looking at me and smiling when he was going back to the history and the fact that this does date to the presidency of President Lincoln in the middle of the Civil War because, you know, there's no telling when I'm going to go off and talk about how amazing it was that things like the National Academy and the Morrill Act and the Transcontinental Railroad all happened at a time of enormous change <clears throat> and stress in the country, but I'm not going to talk about that this morning. Um, <laughs> maybe. Um, 